Do you think your kids would want more speed out of their power wheels? I'll show you how. Hey, welcome back. It's been about a month since I've done a video. I took a little time off. I just needed a break. We were fixing a lot of mowers, snow blowers, anything with an engine on it. Uh, but I got something different today. So my son's power wheel uh, F-150 here, the battery on it's getting weak. So if you ever mess with a power wheel, they got different batteries, usually 6 or 12 volts. This one's 12 volt, but these things cost about $60 or so to replace. And between the vehicles and tractors that I have, I own a lot of batteries, so I don't necessarily want to purchase one of these. But I was thinking, what if we use one of these? So if we go from 12 volts to 20 volts, um, things are going to speed up a little bit. So I've got that, but then I was thinking, well I've got this one too. Same thing, higher capacity. You might actually get similar runtime out of it as the stock battery. But then I was thinking again, you remember my leaf blower? What if we use this? Yep. Okay, so here's what we got. We got the flex volt, 60 volt max battery, which oper well, we're gonna operate it at 20 volts and just have a longer runtime. I've got this DC motor power controller we're going to use. This will give us variable voltage based on what we specify with the potentiometer. And I normally don't do things the safe way, but we're going to put a 30 amp fuse in there just because we don't want this thing to burn down. We also have this uh, fairly cheap DeWalt 20 volt to USB adapter, which we're going to use this to go onto the battery and we're going to take out the USB connections and use this to get our power directly from the battery. Now there's different ways you can do this. So this is the stock connector in here that would hook up to the stock battery. You could cut this thing off and use the leads directly on whatever you choose to hook up. Or you could also leave this on there in case you want to revert back to a stock battery at some point. And in that case, we would just splice onto the existing wires so you can do either or. But you don't want to do both. So I think we're going to leave this intact and we're going to add uh, what we need onto this line so that we have the option of using either battery. So we're going to start by taking this thing apart. So the only thing holding it together is there's a metal clip in here and there's a screw. So we'll start by taking that screw out. A Torx bit, and then for the clip, we're just gonna take a. I got a tiny little flathead screwdriver, I'm just gonna pry that out of there. So, with that, should come right apart. All right, so this is the stuff we don't need in there. I do need this black adapter here, but I don't need the circuit board. I've never used this thing. Um, so I'll probably save it and maybe I'll decide to use it on another project. I've got my old soldering iron here that I hardly ever use. It does work and it is plugged in now, but it's also like 28 degrees Fahrenheit out, so it's going to take a little min minute to f uh, warm up. I don't want it late, so I'm going to use some map gas to help give it a jump start. So I'm simply desoldering this. I'm taking these leads out of the circuit board. All right. I could have just cut it off, but I might want to reuse it, so that's the reason why I unsoldered it. Next, we're going to take this adapter and we're going to put it back inside the shell housing. And we're basically just going to leave these leads going out the what used to be the USB port holes. Let's see if we can figure this out. For the ease of routing the wires, I'm going to drill a hole directly to the outside. And I need to do this on both of these pieces. Okay, so we've got our two holes in there. The next we're going to try and get our uh, adapter in there for the battery and route the wires out those holes that I just drilled. I have this uh, black piece in here with the terminals on it. I've got the leads coming out the rear and everything's where it should be, so I'm going to put that uh, torque screw back in and also the metal clip. The metal clip will just pop right in there and that holds it together at the rear. 
it's another good time to kind of observe which is your positive and negative. So because of markings on the battery, I know that this is positive and this is negative. Might be a good idea for you to mark those. I probably won't. So this is evolving a little bit as I go. I've decided to put some quick disconnects on the battery so that if I want to use it for other things that I can. The absolute best way to connect all these things would be to solder it, but we're just doing this quickly. So as I'm putting these quick disconnects onto the battery, I'm putting uh, different ones on each side. That way that I, when it comes to hooking it up to this uh, power wheels, that I can't put them on the wrong side. That disconnect is going to go to our inline fuse, the 30 amp fuse. Um, it's a good idea to put this on the positive side, so that's what we're going to do. I'll put a quick connect on this. And on this side, I'm going to put one of these uh, spade connectors. I've got another better crimping tool down here than this one, but this will do. On the DC uh, power controller, it has an input side and it's got an output side, so it's pretty simple. And with this being on the positive side of things, everything's labeled. It's just going to go on the positive input, and I'm going to screw it down. So my decision point here is what I do with the negative. I have uh, some wire I can use for this, however it's a smaller gauge than I want to use. Okay, so I think I'm actually going to cut this adapter off, and I can always add it on there in the future if I want. I just don't have the right combination of components to do this uh, the way that I want to and keep that on there. So, chop. Shop. I'm going to put some uh, spade connectors directly onto these as well. Now these can connect up to the uh, controller. They're labeled positive and negative as well. On this one, the white is positive and the black's negative. Now the last thing I need to do is figure out how I want to jump my negative off the battery to the negative input on the controller. Let me look around real quick, see what wire options I have. Looking around, what I have is I, I didn't have any black cable that was the gauge that I wanted, but that's okay. The color doesn't matter. I just wanted to keep the gauges all the same because if I cut, went down to a, a lower gauge of cable or wire it's going to cause more resistance which is going to result in more heat and we're trying to not make this thing uh, catch on fire. So we'll make this little jumper here with the connectors that I need. So we're going to crimp this on here and this will give me the connections I need to hook it up to both the battery and the controller. I'll go ahead and cook, hook it up to the controller. So here's a recap of what we've done. We've taken the DeWalt uh, battery to USB adapter. We've cut out the USB part. We just got leads coming out. We've chopped off the Power Wheels proprietary connector off the truck. We wired in our DC uh, power controller, and we put in our inline fuse. So at this point, I think we're ready to start plugging stuff in. I'm going to hook up my battery adapter to the uh, inline fuse, as well as the negative directly to the, uh, the lead coming off the controller itself. So this is what we have here in the compartment, this combination of stuff. Now we're ready to put a battery on it. I'm not, I'm not going to start by putting this one in there. So we're going to put this on, hope nothing blows up. <laughs> Next, I am going to do some quick tests here with the voltmeter. And we're just going to make sure that I have voltage uh, as I expect it in the right places. So checking the input side of the controller, it's actually 
Is that thing fun or what? Yeah. So I put some. 